This is the second section on conic sections two on the further pure one book. And this is on hyperbolas. Now, um, in chapter two, in the AS section of the book, you would have done the rectangular hyperbola, which is the one that looks like the reciprocal graph. So it's the rectangular hyperbola like this. Now, a rectangular hyperbola looks different. Oh, sorry, this are a standard hyperbola. It looks different. So let's draw a sketch of what that would look like uh, here. So it's almost like the reciprocal graph, but sort of rotated around a bit. So we get um, like this. Let's do that again. That's not great at all. Let's just try this. So we got like a piece over here. Uh, we got a piece over here. OK, so this is a, another conic section. And what we have, we do have asymptotes. And these asymptotes here, they go through the origin. I'll try and draw them as best I can. So we've got an asymptote there and an asymptote here. So this is what the what we call the standard hyperbola looks like. OK, so this one over here was the rectangular hyperbola and this one the standard hyperbola so let's look in a bit more detail at what's going on so where the graphs cut the x-axis they cross at a and minus a a bit like where the ellipse crosses at a and minus a and we also need to know the equation of these asymptotes. Uh, this one here is y equals minus b over ax. And the other one over here that slopes up, that will be y equals b over ax. So notice like the ellipse, we have these values of a and b. Uh, they serve slightly different purposes. So we want to look at the equation just like before the Cartesian equation and the parametric equation. So the Cartesian equation looks very similar to the ellipse. It will be x squared over a squared, but this time minus y squared over b squared. With the ellipse, it was plus and this equals one. So change that to a plus sign and you get the ellipse. In a parametric form, we actually now start to use um, uh, what's that thing called with the H's? Oh, hyperbolic functions. That's what I was looking for. So with this, the parametric equation is going to be x equals and that's plus or minus a cosh t and y is equal to b shine t now here t can be any real number with the ellipse remember it was restricted between naught and 2 pi but the parametric equation comes in two flavors two forms so another way of writing the parametric equation so this uh, gives exactly the same thing to sort of alternative form we, and we can write it in terms of second tan so I'll have the way that we get the x coordinate is going to be a sec theta and the way that we get the y coordinate is going to be b tan theta now here theta uh, we restrict to being between negative pi and pi less than pi but theta cannot equal plus or minus pi over 2 that's because if we can't do tan of plus pi over 2 or minus pi over 2 you'll get a math error because you'll end up 
trying to work out the time where you've got like the asymptotes of the graph. That's why we can't uh, use these values in here. Now, when we look at the general points, so I'll write this here. So a general point, which we often call P on this uh, hyperbola. Well, if it's Cartesian, it's just going to be X, Y. If it's parametric using the first form, using hyperbolic functions, um, it would be uh, A cosh T. That'll be plus or minus or B shine T. And the other alternative form um, would be A sec theta uh, B tan theta. Okay, this hyperbola has this equation which we'll highlight here sketch h so that means we need to get it in the correct format and the format is going to be um, x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals one so that means we need to take the equation that's written and divide both sides by 36 so we'll get 9x squared over 36 minus 4y squared over 36 equals 1. We'll simplify those two fractions. Um, so we'll divide the first one by 9. So we'll get x squared over 4 minus, um, we'll divide the second one by 4. So that'd be y squared over 9 equals 1. So I can see from that that the value of a is going to be 2 and the value of b is going to be 3. It's got to be the square root of those values. Once I've got those values, I can sketch it and I can write down the equations of the asymptotes as well. So here's my sketch, x and y. We'll draw in our hyperbolas here. So remember these cross at the values of a, so two and minus two. And we also need to write down what the equations of these asymptotes are. Now remember one of them, let's do the one that slopes up. This is y equals, um, this one will be the b over a x. So b over a will be three over two x. Whereas this one, the one that slopes down, that'll be minus b over a, so minus three over two x. So it's important that we put the asymptotes because they do form part of the sketch, the equations of the asymptotes. Then we can move on to part b, and part b is asking us to find the parametric equations. Now remember, there are two forms which we can give our answer in and actually we'll, we'll write both. Okay, so using the hyperbolic functions, we'd have x equals, now it's plus or minus a cosh t. Now a is 2, so 2 cosh t. And the y part of the parametric equation um, you'll remember is b shine t, so b is 3, so it's 3 shine t. Now we also need to write down any restriction on the value of t, so here t can be any real number. Or, so we could give this as an answer instead, if we use the form that uses um, second tan, we've got a sec theta which would be 2 sec theta and the y part of the parametric equation um, that part is b tan theta so that's going to be 3 tan theta and again we'll write down what the restriction on theta is here so here remember theta can be anywhere between negative pi and pi but pi or theta 
cannot be equal to plus or minus pi over 2. Right, let's have a look at this one. So we've got a hyperbola, it's got this parametric equation, so it's given as a parametric equation this time, using sine and t form, not the hyperbolic form. Uh, find a Cartesian equation for h. So remember our Cartesian form uh, equation is going to be like this. So we just want to find the values a and b. And the values of a and b are just going to be the values in front of sec and tan. So a equals 4, b equals 1. So Cartesian equation is going to be x squared over, and that's got to be 4 squared, not just over 4, so over 16, minus uh, y squared over 1 squared, so it's just 1 equals 1. So there's our Cartesian equation. Okay, part B is drawing a sketch. Now this is going to be fairly straightforward because we've got the values of A and B. We just need to put them in. So we're going to have our two little like parabolas here, like this. Okay, and we're going to have our asymptotes here and here. So we need to mark down where it crosses the axis. So it crosses here, and that value is a, which is 4. This value here is going to be negative 4. Then the asymptotes. So this one here is y equals b over a. So a quarter x. And this one here is going to be y equals negative b over a. So minus a quarter x and part c well we've already answered part c uh, because the sketch really should include the asymptotes in the equations of the asymptotes so they are y equals a quarter x and y equals negative a quarter x okay you can now do exercise 3b very short exercise two questions on page 67 um, gonna be a quick recap here uh, pretty much gone through everything on the um, first slide there so our hyperbola with our sketch like this crossing at a and negative a are asymptotes here, where one of them is uh, y equals b over a x and the other one is y equals negative b over a x where do we get these from well the equation uh, of our hyperbola um, We've got different forms to write it in. So Cartesian form. We've got our parametric form using uh, shine and cosh. And here t can be any real value and the other form is using sec and tan uh, here theta can go anywhere from minus pi to pi but um, theta cannot equal plus or minus pi over 2 and lastly if you take any general point here p that can be xy in cartesian form um, or plus or minus a cosh t b shine t or a sec theta sine theta 
Oh, tan theta.